a bit of a mess. I don't know if the, the coach at the time was the right coach when they, when they actually signed him, Andy Last. I, I know he's a good bloke and I just don't think... I think it needs just a big shake-up at the club. He should be just player-led now. You know, there's that much experience in, in the club and the team that they probably been there thereabouts and done similar things, you know. I've been on losing streaks before. It's just about getting up and dusting yourself off and going again. Almost tooth, the run ankle broke, cabbage to the face. Is there a few players in the squad that are like highlighted for a potential go missing for a few days? Are you top of that list? <laughs> I'm probably in the bracket of top. <laughs> Suspensions nowadays, you get, you hit someone around the ear and you get a two week ban. So me and Josh, we can drive the car. <laughs> Lamborghini. Is it? Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. Shit. So we could we can use his bank card. What we the could, fuck, mate? Right, use a bank Execute card. this quickly. Yeah. He's newly single. He's Is it? He? Yeah. He's, he's often found in coffee shops around West Yorkshire. So I see him in Blonders a fair bit. Is he um, approachable? Very approachable. He's, uh, he's looking he's looking well. He's growing his hair. He's not going to cut it for a year, so he's got the slip back going on. Fuck me. This is like a midlife crisis going on then now. I think it, it's, it's really, it's near that. I want, I want Kyle Jeffries to come dress as Alan. <laughs> I think you would do. Yeah, man. He'd be happy to do that. I think that. you'd do yeah. that. Things do king things. Live like one, breathe like one. Killing shit by any means. Uh, everybody can't leave like one. Nah. Is it really me? Gotta check and see my legacy like royalty. Gonna act like it. If you know, better act like it. Look at me now. You can't hold me down. So give me the, give me the crown. They say I walk like a king. Walk like We've got the main man back, Zach Ardaker. How do you feel about me? Uh, how do you feel about me talk? Yeah, I mean, I was speaking about it the other day, actually. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> no, I don't mind. Um, it's great that you've got, you know, one of each on. Yeah, representing. Ellis is repping mine, so thank you. For How many times you done this? <laughs> when you scored? No, actually, not yet. Have you not? If I do, if I score Saturday, I will do. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. So see how we go. How many Challenge Cup finals have you been in? Been in. I've been involved in three, but I played in two, um, and I've won two with Leeds. So yeah, obviously, I'm hoping for a third time lucky, but. It's gonna be it's gonna be a tough game, but I'm really excited. I woke up Monday morning, just extra spring in my step. Um, I think just being older, having two kids, life looking a, a little bit different for me than it did eight years ago when I last won it. So, yeah, things are in the pipeline a bit different for me, but yeah, looking forward to it. When you say that, then what? Just the ability to take that weekend in that weekend and just really digest it all for yourself. Yeah, I worked at media day yesterday, and I got asked a few questions and. I said, like, when I was at Leeds, I was kind of a, not a passenger, but I was just in a, a well-oiled machine, really, um, with some absolute fantastic players. Uh, and I just did my part, but, you know, this year I'm I'm 31, I'm a bit older than quite a lot of the lads, uh, a bit more experienced in that aspect. So I think like, I've got a bit of a different feel, like you say, just I'm going to take this all in this week. I don't know if I've got many more in me, so... Um, mm. So yeah, I'm just gonna really enjoy the week, take as much as much as I can in, and try and enjoy it on Saturday. I can't remember how far along it go when we did the first podcast, but the form that Lee have been in, what do you attest that to? Um, so I got asked this question yesterday, and I've had a good think about it, and I, I, suppose, I resemble it to I've been a part of like a Lee Dryano successful team and club. Um, I was at Wigan for a few years, successful team, successful club. So and what you're saying is it just follows you around then, basically. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that, but no. Um, I think the the bond and the, the chemistry that you build over a certain period of time, often or not, it takes a couple of years. But at Lee, for some reason, it's just happened very sudden. Um, so that camaraderie, you know, the, the lads bring the kids at, to, to training, you get to know the sons, the wives, uh, the daughters, the sons, the, the mums and dads. Um, and it's just really happened really quickly. And then... When you go on the pitch, you, you play for your mates. You don't want to let your mates down. And I think that's like, the key to success has been that. You know, Adrian Lamb, the coach, has been massive on, uh, is your outside business really good? Is it healthy? You know, family, yourself. And then if that's okay, then you come into training, you've got a smile on your face. You're willing to learn, you're willing to work hard. And that just transpires on on and off the field. So he's, he's been a massive, massive part of that. And How uh, involved is he with that? So you mentioned there, you know, if your if your home line's happy and you you're doing all the things outside of the rugby, is he is he policing that? What's how's that look? So he's he's massive on a team socials. So like probably once a month, he wants all the boys to go out for a beer. Um, he wants the partners to to do something. Or like we had a family barbecue a few weeks ago, so that like where everyone's kids and, and and wives and girlfriends, um, and we had the bounce castle and everything we put on by the club, and then. He's just really keen on like, look lads, we've got training today and we'll knock it on Ed for half an hour. So maybe an hour session's half an hour, but I, I want you all towards Costa. I want you all to stay there for half an hour just to talk 
talk a lot of rubbish, but I want you to be part part of, part of the team. So he's done that a few times. So it, that's kind of policing it. Is is putting socials down. I'm part of the leadership group, so uh, once every couple of weeks, he'll he'll get the leadership group in, which is four of us, and they'll say, "Look, lads, we've got this is a schedule. We play Friday, Saturday, Friday, Saturday." We can probably fit a, a team piss up on a Sunday. What what do you reckon to it? He's like, yeah, yeah. So then he goes away and tries to organise it. And it, like he's really big on that. He's really big on if the boys are having fun and having a good drink or going bowling or cinemas or barbecue. If, Just try and keep that brother up. Yeah, time. that's it. And I think, like I say, we, I've been a part of teams where it takes probably a couple of years to, you know, I've been in a part of team where five lads will always speak to each other. Some mm -hmm. lads will not speak to each other. Not because they're not mates, it's just... They don't, they don't see eye to eye on certain things. It's just a, it's a part of life. But at least it just seems to, you know, everyone enjoys each other's company. Everyone wants to be with each other and, and, and talk shit and talk about past experiences, life, girlfriends, you know, if they've had a shit sleep, a good sleep. And, you know, some of the stories that we do talk about, it's uh, somewhat like some of, <laughs> one of the young lads of the other day. I'll, I'll tell you a story. He's, uh, I don't know if to name him, but he... Oh. Um, I'm out of name. It's called. It's called. It's called a Milo Andley, right? Uh, young kid, really nice bloke. Um, and these, these are some of the conversations we have. I can't say them all because I'll probably get in trouble. But so I'm getting changed, and lads are speaking, and he goes, um, "Oh, lads, uh, have you seen, like we're on about porn. They were porn talk, and I, and I weren't really paying attention. But he said, "Oh, lads, this is what I'm into at minute." So well, it's so, a big so, subject that he likes yeah, to watch. Yeah, so I'll, <laughs> me as a pricked over. <laughs> I've gone. What? And he's, he's showing them on this video. And I'm like, what is it? What is it? And he's he's showing this, you know, the AI animated, yeah. like cartoony thing. Yeah. Like two women, one's got a penis. What? Having sex with another woman. That's intense. And it's uh, so I'm like, what the fuck is that? Like, that's that's weird that. How does that turn you on and all this like, like, kind of stuff? And he's going, no, no, no. There's a storyline to it. <laughs> so I'm going, oh, he's proper investor. Yeah, so like, what do you mean? He's like, oh, it's 40, 48 minutes long. And fucking they, hell. They, they come into a barn and one woman don't want to see it with another woman. And I'm like, it sounds like a fucking that's, episode of Coronation Street yeah. that's got animated characters in it who have sex at end. So just like stuff like that. And it's in any other workspace, you probably get done for, for that kind of talk. And it's just what the banter that goes on. And I think just stuff like that, it's, you, we connected that early. It's funny and it's just So when you make mates there, you, ultimately you, you feel you play, you want to play for them. Yeah, right? yeah, definitely. Like I, I don't want to let any of them down and I think that goes for every, every single person at the club. And yeah, and I think that like the, the bond that we've just got for a short period of time, I think that's a massive part to, to play in what we're doing this year. Have you ever been at a team where you've not had that bond with them and you've still done okay? Yeah, I've, like, let's say I, when I was at Leeds, you know, we had quite a lot of, uh, when I was like 21, 22, I probably wouldn't knock about with, 36 year old as mm. much you know I'm like, it's not my they probably go for a coffee I'm whizzing straight back home and I'm seeing what my mates are doing and you know what I mean it's yeah. a bit bit split same as Wigan you know I had, I had my friends that I talked to all the time and probably we'd go for a coffee but there'd be about six or seven of us and vice versa but at least it just seems that you know because we've got people from different walks of life and, and different clubs and we've more or less been like put together because clubs didn't want us or your time was up or you're 31, so you're getting to end of your career, but Lee want you to, for your experience and, and, and stuff like that. And we've all come together and be like, you know, fuck it, we're gonna, that, that club didn't want him, well, fuck them. Mm. Or that club didn't want him, fuck them. And then I want to stay at Leeds, they don't want me, so I'm a bit like, well, oh, all right then. So it's just like that that mixture of people and, you know, it's just a big cocktail really of, of the things and it's just all come together and like, yeah, we're just a strong, strong group. And Is know, there a feeling there. between the group there then you've got something to prove? I think so, yeah, but it's nothing like we want, we need to prove it. It's just individually, we're, we're a proud, proud per I, like myself, I'm a proud person. I want to do the best I can and I love, you know, proving people wrong. I've, I've done it for a lot of years and I just think it collectively as a group, we've all single-minded, that's what we want. So then when, we, when you put it into a group and... You've got a coach and a playing staff and an owner like Derek who's a bit bonkers, but he wants the best for us. It's just a great mixture of, of getting the best does out Does he get involved with boys with partying and that? He does, yeah. Does he, came out, he came out with Team Social. I saw that jacket he wears. Does he wear that yeah, out? Yeah, <laughs> mate, he loves it. He's got, it's, most of it's uh, Dolce & Gabbana. Oh, nice. Is it? So if you go on Dolce & Gabbana website, pretty much 80% of, of what they sell is leopard print, and I reckon Derek's got most of it. So he had a jacket on the other day, and it was seven and a half grand. And um, one of the lads said he's got he's had um, 
uh, a jacket fitted, um, tailor made for for Wembley. It's cost him thousands of pounds. The last couple of weeks he's been on holiday, he's been on a cruise, and he's you know he's been eating, he's been drinking. And apparently he tried it on last week, it doesn't fit. Oh, no. <laughs> and he can't even sell it because it's tailored to him. <laughs> so um, I'm not sure that's going to go down. I don't know if he's going to try and drastically lose a load of weight and put it and try and wear it or he's going to probably go out and buy another one. But He'll just give it to him on a match. Yeah, it. well, there's that as well, hopefully. So if I pull my finger out, I yeah. can, I can wear, come for it. What are odds on you if it lands, Todd? <laughs> I'm not sure, mate. Um, uh, Lammy said this, he said, look, lads, I don't want you as an individual to go out and try and win a game, which I've probably done it past because I want won't just want to win that much. It's, but I think that's the the beauty of our team at the minute. If I play an eight out of ten game, and everyone else does, we're, we're pretty much going to win a game. So I think it's just about, you know, like I said, enjoying the occasion, but not letting it get on top of me and just doing a bit for the team. Which I'll, I'll you know, I'll work my bollocks off for it. So we'll see. There's been a bit in the press this week regarding OK, our resting players. What do you think to any of that? Have you got any? Yeah, um, well, it caught me by surprise. I thought resting players, it's its not unheard of. I think that's, you know, especially if you've got an older lad or a bit of a niggle, um, <clears throat> you get rested like I got rested at, at the weekend. But when I saw the team sheet and there were no, I think the lowest number was 16 onwards. It was like, wow, I think they've rested the actual full squad, mm. full team for the weekend. So, yeah, I, that caught, caught me by surprise. And we got beat by Wigan the week before and Lammy was a bit pissed off that we'd lost. We're second in the table, so I think he wants us to keep that that momentum in that in that aspect. Have so they got like, all eggs in one basket? Okay, yeah, yeah. And the, but but Lammy were like, look, we've got this, we've got this. I don't want to be a person who's not going to look after the players. But in other terms, he wants to go out and beat Leeds on, on Sunday. Just gone, so he named the the full team. And we were like, oh, we, I weren't quite sure because I'm suspensions nowadays. You get you hit someone around the ear and you get a two week ban. So it's you don't know in them terms either. So like 10 years ago, a head eye tackle would probably just be a telling off, but now you, you're you scared to, to do anything wrong because you don't want to miss the Wembley trip. You know, people have got 20 members of family going down and everything's been sorted. So I think everyone's head is a bit not in the game. So I was a bit bit wary of that. Me and Josh Charlie got rested. We had a bit of a niggle. So fortunately, I was, I was quite quite excited that I weren't playing because I was a bit scared that if I'd, I'd played, I might pull it even more. So... I was unfortunate on that aspect, but yeah, I'm not quite sure. Um, I've, I've been in a team where we've rested players and we've gone, it didn't even not a challenge cup, but even a, like a playoff game, we've rested players and we've not performed because we've not had mm. that, you know, performance. To not firing. Before. Yeah. And I've, on the flip side, I've been rested and we've been fresh. So ultimately it comes down on the day. I think if, if we, we, we am a del care, which I don't think we would, but it would probably come back, come to bite them on the ass or, if they beat us, it would be like, well, you should have rested. So it's one of them, whatever works for us. But I think most importantly, we didn't get any bans. Um, no one's injured. So we can just go into this week, you know, confident that we've just beat Leeds and set that form into, into Saturday. Speaking from your experience for like a fan like me and for people listening who are fans, how does that, the week building up to it, but how, when do you go down? What does that sort of look like for the squad? Yeah, so we go, so... We played on Sunday, so we got um, today we're day off. Wednesday we're in. Uh, Thursday morning we travelled down the, to I think we're staying at Hilton down in Wembley. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> we're getting looked after. It's brilliant. It's, I can't wait. Um, I think that's the most exciting bit. And then the families travelled down on the Friday morning. Then we've got a big party arranged for for Saturday, win or lose. Derek said he's just really proud for us to to get there. How many days that last? It depends. <laughs> uh, no, I think I think Lammy's had a word and said, "Look, he's tried to get it all out of, out of the way." So we had a meeting yesterday, and he's like, "Look, lads, this is this is the plan. If you win, this is the plan. If you lose, this is the plan." And he's basically put a kind of a curfew on two days if if we win. It's still a decent stint. So but it could be free depending <laughs> on how we go. Is there a few players in the squad that are like highlighted for a potential go missing for a few days? Are you top of that list? <laughs> I'm probably in the bracket. I've probably been spoken about. I've probably been spoken about, but um, yeah, it's um, like, we, we don't know how it's going to go, but um, yeah, we, it's just about going there, enjoying it. Hopefully we get the win and we've got stuff planned in, in, in nice. place to to enjoy it. Remember last time you were on podcast, you you were talking about being on Tinder and stuff like that. How's your relationship at the moment? Yeah. Yeah. It's, back um, in the big bed. I'm not back in the big bed. Oh, I'm, still in, I'm still in the spare bed. Still in the spare um, bed. I'm not sure where it's going to be honest. We just we kind of co-parenting, which is, is pretty good. We've got a good relationship, taking the kids everywhere, doing what they 
you know, as long as they've got a smile on their face, we're yeah. pretty happy at the minute. So just take it as it comes, mate. I'm not, I'm not quite sure where it's going to go, but we'll, we'll What was that? Yeah, I always laugh at it. What did he say his profile the last time on this? <laughs> Got a question, just ask me. <laughs> <laughs> well, how many people implement that system? I don't know. I reckon a few people might have taken that. Yeah, it was, it, my bio was just, if you've got a question, just ask. I like that. And then uh, I always put um, my Instagram in my bio. Yeah, to so get a couple of extra followers. Hopefully they go on there and see my blue tick. And, oh. uh, <laughs> like, try and reel them in. I yeah. like it. So I, I like to do that. I'm going to have to ask you as a, as a cast fan, the club, relegation battle there, what do you feel is going on? What can oh. you speak? What can you speak on? I don't know. From the outset, in it looks a bit of a mess. I don't know if the the coach at the time was the right coach when the when they actually signed him, Andy Last. I, I know he's a good bloke, and I just don't think. I think it needs just a big shake up at the club. Um, I know everyone keeps going on about they've got an, you know an older set of group. I, I know I know them all as well, so it's I can't say too much bad about them because they're, they're good lads and on the day they can they're, they're a good team. If you, if you went on paper, every, every, a sheet of paper on every team at the start of the year, you'd, you'd think they'd be there or thereabouts in top six playoff spot. And I'm sure that's what the, the aiming was. And wh wh whatever's gone on, it's, it's just not quite happening for them. And then, you know, Wakefield were, I think, 12 on the bounce, lose, losing. And I think everyone submitted the fact that, you know, they're going down and a resurgence has happened there and they're really full of confidence. And yeah, I think they play a week after Wembley for the, Calling it like the big. Well, do you feel that game. with the mentality there? Then that they just expected Waker to go down, and they just. Whoop, I, I whoop. think I think maybe they just they expected things to to happen. You know, if you look like say look at the team, they're, they're all vastly experienced, they're good players. Um, for whatever reason, it's just not clicked. You know, letting Lee Radford go and then getting Andy Lasting and letting him go, it's it's probably not the best for any club. To be fair, uh, I know it's just happened with Warrington, but um, yeah, I, I think it. It should be just player led now. You know, there's that much experience in, in the club and the team that they've probably been there thereabouts and done similar things. You know, I've been on losing streaks before. It's just about getting up and dusting yourself off and going again. But this year it's been it's been a pretty tight contest. I think, you know, a Wakefield could be us on any given day mm -hmm. if we just didn't turn up and play. So it's uh, definitely a game to, to mark on your calendar for next week. I think it'll be a great game to watch and you know, I don't I'm not sure who, I think whoever's going to lose that game could be probably potentially to go down, but it's just a bit of a mess at the minute. Have you ever been part of a squad before when you say the uncertainty there, you know, cre doubt will creep in? As, as far as I can see outward in, there's a lot of players that, you know, seeking contracts for, you know, their career and to, for their livelihood. Have you ever been part of a squad that, that has been in that funk? I haven't really, no. I've, like I say, I've just been fortunate being at clubs where it's, you know the the prize is number one, and yeah. if you don't get there, you get you get elbowed really. But I've been at Leeds. Uh, we've won it twice from fifth, and being being fifth is, you know, it's not a great great achievement in itself. But we've just gone on on mm -hmm. to win, and I think in the, those those times we've we've tried to create a story of look we've we've finished fifth, everyone's writing us off, and we've looked at inspiration from. I can remember watching a clip from the NFL. We played it every week, and it just gives you a bit like, you know, come on, we can do this, and it's just that that belief and someone backing you, backing the players, and I just think, especially at the cast at the minute, there's that much doom and gloom. I, I don't think it's great for the players. It's hard anyway. to overcome that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, hopefully they can turn <laughs> it around. Obviously, I've been at the club. I don't want it to be. Mm. I don't want to see it like that. But um, you know, with with the coach going, I'm, I think they're seeking a new coach. So, however that goes, I'm not quite sure. But um, why don't you step up to that? That's no, not my game. That. <laughs> I could see you being a good coach. Mate. I've heard John Keir's intro. I'm, I've heard John I'm Keir, not sure yeah. what I think about that. I, I've, I've never been under John Keir, but I've heard that he's a great man management and a great motivator. So on that kind of term, I think that's probably what, what the club needs. I, I don't think you can turn around and change the playing style or you can't you can't get anyone in now. The, the, the transfer window's gone. So I think it's just someone who needs to go in, look at what they've got, play to the strengths and be like, look lads, you've been there, done it. There's no 40 year olds in there. They're all 31, mm -hmm. 32. And some of them are great players. So I think it's just about- Do you think Blake Austin can make a difference? I think he can do on his day, yeah. He's, he's to be fair, we were the best player for Leeds for the last six or eight weeks. And funny enough, we, we previewed, before we played Leeds, we previewed Blake Austin and Richard Myler as their two main threats. Richard Myler broke his toe and Blake Austin got let go or whatever happened Seemed there. a strange carry on that, didn't it? Because coach yeah. came out that he found out about it on the morning yeah, that you the weren't night quite before sure. and they were like, we're Yeah, weird. and I think um, it must have come from, from over top, but 
funny enough, he did a podcast with someone. I'm not sure who it was, and he kind of spilt some beans that you probably shouldn't have All spilt, right. um, and said some things that I thought, ooh, could be could closed come. at bone. Yeah, um, I thought it might bite you on the ass, and whether they come to a mutual agreement or what, I'm, I'm, I really don't know, but. Yeah, he said some things. Oh, I thought, ooh. What did he dig into? Just the owner, Gary Vinson. Oh, he's about ownership. Yeah, and, Big no-no, isn't it? It's just yeah. writing checks. Yeah, <laughs> it, I think he just said what he, he might have done right or might have done wrong. Oh, and shit. I was like, ooh. Um, I know Gary from, I've been at Leeds for years, so I was like, oh, I don't think Gary liked that. And mm. then, yeah. Probably, See you later. Probably a week later, he's, he's not <laughs> yeah. there, so you can take that from what you will, but. Disappeared. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just shunned to, to cast, but it can make a difference, mate. He's, he's a player that, you know, will, will, will play for this shirt, so. You mentioned off camera there, we were discussing the Sky deal and the zone potentially looking in. I've seen a few articles and read a few reports. I know it's a quite a tough question to ask, but I'm such a big fan of the of the sport, me, and rugby league and what it brings as a spectacle as sport and, and the players who play it and how, how hard it can be for them. How do, they, how do they grow the game? I know it's a deep question that like... Do, do they have to get the players more on camera? Like, how do they bring it into this social media world? I'm trying to like wrap my head around it. I think there's so many characters in the game. Yeah, it's such a good game to watch yep. when it's not been over reffed. Like, how do they, how do they bring that out? Do you think? Yeah, good question. I think if someone had the right answer, they'd, they'd get him in and, and get it done. But as a player, I just think, um, I think we health and safety, everything's getting changed, so it's a little bit. You know, 10 years ago, it, the game looks totally different to now. So I think we just have to get around the fact that that's, that's how it's going to look. Um, it's going to probably look different in another 10 years. Um, but I'm a big believer in, in the character of the game. I think we just need to promote the characters. That's the that's the people that the, the fans come and watch. I don't think there's that much, um, if I'm going to be honest, like advertisement for the game. You don't see it that much on telly. You don't see it that much out and about. I can remember being... I was on the Eddie Stobart lorry years ago when they got sponsored by sponsored by that. And you could see on it's still the world, crab tree going by on one wet lane. I was on mm -hmm. another, there was someone else, and people were like, what the fucking hell is that? And yeah. you know, it was a big six foot seven player like trying to score a try, like Superman. So, so you're on an Eddie Stobart lorry, but you still chose your bio to be if you've got a question, <laughs> ask me, bro. Why would you but ask me on Eddie Stobart? That'd have been my profile photo, <laughs> yeah. and I'd have been, yes, that's me on the Eddie Stobart lorry. I, I, feel, I, feel, change it. I, I feel there, <laughs> me, this is me using my business brain now. It's like, take the cult followers from these working class towns who will always go down and they'll pay the gate money and they'll go watch the games and all stuff like this. To appeal to the masses now, it, it has to be done on social media. It has to be, the players have to be seen on there. The sport has to be showcased in a way, which is appealing to the next generation. Because if you haven't, like me, my granddad will invested heavily, so he'd take you down. Yeah a few generations down the line that ain't gonna happen so if there's not an appeal for a younger person to either play the game so if, I don't even know if that's as strong as it used to be like when we were kids mm. from under eights yeah. all the way through you went and played rugby with your mates and that's yeah. what everybody did yeah. I don't know if it's the same anymore I've seen a lot of local clubs fold or struggle for players so anyone who comes in to me it has to be a spotlight on the characters yeah. not just the game because if you can buy into the players yeah. and invest in that, why won't you want to come down and watch Zach Hardacre play, Josh yeah. Charlie play, these boys come and play rugby? It's it's so old school, isn't it? Because is any, do any of the boys do podcasts or vlogs or is it few and far between? <clears throat> I think, it, yeah, it's few and far between. I, I, I enjoy it. Whatever you want to speak about, I'm, I'm comfortable. I like, it's like having a chat. I think yeah. it's, it's great. Whether it's talking about your life, rugby or, or outside or conspiracy theories or whatever you want to chuck in the mix, it's uh, I'm happy to talk about. But I think it's, everyone needs to do more, more stuff away from rugby, but yeah. kind of related to rugby. So it's yeah. like this rugby league player or this football is, you know, if if, if Cristiano Ronaldo or obviously I can't say that to someone else in rugby league, but Jack Grealish, for instance, if you got him on a podcast and spoke about, you know, how are you beef for Chip? Obviously some stuff he can't say, but yeah. you know, just that's fucking interesting. Yeah. And mm -hmm. if you got that about rugby league players or what do you do on your time off or do this, do that? I never knew that. Or what do you, or I'm doing a degree in, Oh, well, I never knew that mm -hmm. as well. So it's just people see you for sometimes at training when it's an, an open invite and then they see you on a Friday night and you get heckled or booed or called a twat or cheered on because you've scored a try. And that's it. And I think it's, like say, social media is playing a massive part in in people earning money, um, showcasing their talent. So I think like the next 10 years, like I say, that'll be totally different to, to the last 10 years. But 
Yeah, I think it just needs someone, a platform to just grab it, grab Super League by the balls, mm. grab rugby by the balls and be like, look, I think this will work, this will work and just implement it and have mm. a go. And then if it don't work, it's at least we've had a crack. Is it know? run by fairly older heads, rugby, RFL? Yeah, and, and we've, we talk about this in, in, in the car sometimes, in the car pull about coaches and, and what the game looks like now from even a few years ago. It's, it's totally changed. And are some coaches trying to implement a game that, was pretty good 10 years ago that's probably not the same now so mm. you know we've got the six again rule we've got we've got rules in play now to, to keep the ball in play to keep it fast so to keep it entertaining so people don't get bored sat in the stands or on the telly that's kind of how it's going so you probably might see younger coaches sam burgess who just you know we've talked out of air but he's going to be um coach of warrington that's what we probably could go down to you know 35 year old coach a 40 a 40 year old coach implementing things that is happening now instead of 10 years, 15 years, yeah. to 15 years ago. So I think that'll probably happen in, it, in itself. But, you know, we just we need a good broadcast deal. We need a bit more money pumped into it. And then off the back of that, I think, you know, the women's game is getting a bit bigger, which is great. You know, that's getting more people. Bro, we watched the women's game in here last week were you, when we sat there. The, yeah. I was surprised at the standard of it, to be fair. I thought it was going to be a lot worse, but they were putting shots on, scoring good tries. Yeah. The, women, the women's rugby is actually coming up. Yeah, and well, I was press conference yesterday, I think St. Helens play Leeds in the Challenge Cup before before our game. And they're playing at Wembley. Yeah. And that's that's huge. And I think someone, one of the girls said yesterday that they played at Ellen Road two years ago. And that was one of the biggest venues a rugby team's ever played at, in a female capacity and they get to go to Wembley it's massive so if we just get more stuff like that and 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 you know the money going I think it should I think a lot of it's to do with money, money. you know the NRL of I think their salary caps like 12 million ours is 2.1 mm. on a player salary so just that in itself speaks massive difference you know what I mean and, and then on the back of that they've got so much money behind them mm. they can endorse it they get cars they get KFC like, even KFC for the half time is it a try or no try? A fucking bargain bucket pops up on your screen. <laughs> and I've done it before. And I'm like, I fancy the KFC. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. just stuff like that and, and endorsements where it, this really bugs me about rugby league. So pretty much every sport gets free boots or if you're a tennis player, you get a free tennis racket. You get fuck all at rugby. And you did a few years ago. I used to get free boots off few off Puma or uh, when I first joined Leeds it was Umbro but there were still d decent boots and I'm just like why has someone from Nike or Adidas or Puma gone look here's a 50% card mm -hmm. everyone will fucking buy Puma boots or Nike boots I, I would just because it's 50% off I bought some boots for Wembley cost me 240 quid do you reach out to these businesses though no and it's so hard because yeah. they're that big they probably won't see you as an individual All right. um so it's probably like you need your agent or even like an organisation of, of Lee or or Super League. Someone in Super League will look, would you sponsor Super League? We, we could do this, this and this. You, if you give our athletes 30% off, 5% off, there'll be people walking around in night track suit, Adidas. Mm -hmm. So there's all kind of stuff like that. And I'm just thinking, have they done it and they've been knocked back or, you know... It all boils back down to money, doesn't it? Of course it doesn't. I wonder yeah. if it's because it's... I don't want to... How do I explain this? Because it's like a working class game, I, I've i done some work with like Ginetta Racing and even like Formula One now, the drivers understand the importance. I always bring it back to this of being a personal brand as well. Yeah. And I just don't think you see that. And there's so many, I, I keep repeating myself, there's so many good characters. Yeah. But it probably just, if you're not getting trained in how to pick the camera up and make vlogs or podcasts, it's probably very tough. Yeah. And I feel it's still old school where I, I remember, what's your teammate called who had the podcast and he got in a little bit of trouble with it? Played Rick Ass. Um, Oliver Holmes. Oh, yeah. So it's like, you can't really, you, you, you're always fighting with the with the bigger, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, and I think it's like if, so if I didn't start doing my own podcast and I just started talking, it'd be like, is that you can't, you can't yeah, do that? Like, yeah. Why? So it's, and because I'm like. It's constrained. Yeah, because I'm not, as, I'm not that massive a character, a big player in the game anymore. They could just bid me off. I'm like, oh. Yeah, you know, I'm there, sat there scratching my head. I'm like, oh, I need a podcast. But they've got so, to think long term that it's putting spotlight on on yeah, game. It's bringing yeah. new eyes to What's it. What's the issue with the podcast? Why did Why did Ollie Holmes get in he, shit? He said some uh, IQ. I, I don't want to ring it. I can't even remember it was what it was. No, he, yeah, it's he, just, he said some. Then he daft. I can't remember. Yeah, what it I think was. I think one of them he got someone on who was a bit controversial, and then they were like, oh, that looked good for the game. It's like, well, it's it's not really to do with the game. Yeah. But again, they, they can tie in. Everything. He can speak well, can Oliver? Can't yeah, he? he had yeah. a good podcast show. 
I talk shit sometimes. But <laughs> 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 no, but he's, he's a great speaker and he's, you know, he's got some good stuff to say. Yeah. If you were to say to Lee, like, oh, what do you think about me doing a vlog, either just vlogging it on my phone or bringing a, a videographer with me to like document behind the scenes, training, warm ups, doing all that sort of stuff. It's going to promote Lee anyway, because people would be tuning in like, oh, I wonder how the ben, training's ben going this did week. It. Me and Ben did it and he got, he got after six episodes, the club didn't like that. It were getting more views than theirs. It yeah. were getting like 10 and 15,000 views. Yeah, but still views. bringing it to Yeah, Lee, but this is what I'm saying with the old school mentality. Yeah. They, I'm not sure they, it, I don't know if with Derek, obviously he's, cause he's totally different to having a Verona. Yeah. Um, I think he'd be pretty cool with that. I think he'd enjoy that, especially with the leopard stuff. He'd be like, as long as you get this leopard stuff in and, yeah. and promote him and promote, promote the club. He's, he's, he's big. He loves Lee. He lo absolutely loves Lee as a town, as a club. So I think anything that's beneficial for the town and club, he'd, he'd be proper keen on that. So I think he'd be, he'd, he'd push it. Mm -hmm. You know, me and Josh have spoke, he wants to do a Zach and Josh Josh show. So one of well, the- Well, I remember years yeah, ago- I remember, a show. I remember years ago when you did cheerleading. Well, we, we did that and I don't, you see, I don't know if I get in trouble for it now, but I can remember we did a Halloween one and went to KFC, funny enough, I just spoke about <laughs> KFC, and it were, we ordered some food and they've asked for um, some money and we've just both put some mask on and one was asked for some money. We'd turn around and go, Aah! and she'd shit herself. And we've had it on fit and they fucking loved it. And I can remember doctor, we, uh, one of the doctors, uh, we got all his rooms and he came about an hour later. So me and Josh hid in the doctor's room. It's all on YouTube. We stood in the bath with the curtain shut and he's coming to the room. So we're being quiet and uh, we're like, right, I'll come in soon, I'll come in soon. He's not coming in. So we like started putting tap on. So we put tap on, he's coming, shut tap off. And then we've sat there and then uh, stood there, sorry. And he goes in and shuts the door again. Went, Fucking hell. He's not, he's not even like thinking there's anyone. Because we've got shut, uh, curtains shut mm. on, on the shower. So we put it on again and then we started going, Ugh. so he's like, and you could see him because I've got my phone <laughs> above the curtain. I'm like this, and he's like looking, and you could see him right now. And he's open curtains. We've just gone fucking, ah! <laughs> and he's gone. Like, honestly, it's, it, there's, a, there's a clip on YouTube. He, he absolutely shits himself, and like stuff like that. We, we're brilliant. And there's Derek Bowman actually sent me and Josh a video, and believe it or not, we do a video, and it's um, we go shopping to Trafford Centre, and we go buy some clothes, and honest to God, one of the shirts Josh puts on or me it's a full leopard print shirt. So Derek's come up with this idea, he wants me and Josh to kind of reenact that little scene, go out, but he says he wants us to just be dressed in full leopard stuff and we're going to the Trafford Centre to buy normal clothes. What's his clothes. fascination <laughs> with what leopards then? I don't understand this. So he's got, um, he's got a, a safari park yeah, yeah. in South Africa. He's got his own private thing and he's, he's, he's mad on animals. And I think obviously leopard must be his, his favourite one. And I think he's had this idea for a few years and obviously it being Lee, Lee Leopards and then, yeah, he just fucking loves leopards and he loves the leopard print and like I say, he wears Dolce and Gabbana. I think he should lean into that. If he's definitely keen to get behind it, he should lean into yeah, that. Yeah, well, well, he's, def he's, a he's asked us. Um, he's had his car wrapped into a <laughs> into le all leopard. What so, a guy. So he said to me and Josh, we can drive the car, <laughs> Lamborghini. Is it? Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. Shit. So we can, we can use his bank card. What we the fuck, right? mate? Use a bank Execute card. this quickly. Yeah, <laughs> use, a, use a bank card, his Lamborghini, video us. Go to the Trafford Centre, oh, do sick. this, and then he wants to like yeah. push it for like a Lee thing. And, and I think it was like 12 years ago, something like that. So it's like... Oh, good man. He should definitely have do something with yeah. that, 100%. Probably buy something else on his card as well, but... Yeah. <laughs> you should just start by, by vlogging the final, like the, the journey down, the change rooms, the vibes yeah. and all that. Yeah, and I think a few boys have tried to do that before, not at Lee, but I think, you know, I think Super League have tried to promote it, give, give someone a, a... A little selfie camera. Yeah, a, a Sky Pro camera or whatever it's called. Um... And, and done that and then sent it to, to, and, to edit. and then they've edited it, yeah. So I think it's been pushed, but like I say, it's not all the time. It will yeah, be it's great. got to be consistent, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, definitely, so. Apart from rugby, then, is there much else going on in your life at the moment? Um, not really, mate. I've, you know, if, if I did a podcast like eight years ago, there'd be quite a bit to go on. Chaos. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, We're getting older, aren't we, boys? This, that, that, yeah, we are. That, that video popped up on my Facebook. I don't know if you'll remember it. You had an house party at your house, and you who were it now? I think it was. I think it was Slatter. You had a you had a cabbage in your hand and punched Slatter and Edric cabbage that popped up on the Facebook from like thirteen years ago. So yeah, like that. I sort of, yeah. I had, um, so when I, when my mum went on holiday, <laughs> I think it. I think she went in the morning. By that afternoon, I bought a bounce castle, yeah. um, put it in back garden, invited everyone I know to to this to be bummed back garden, and uh, yeah, that were a mad one. I think we did. Um, I think it was Chad. One of Slatter's mates, uh, there's a window about 
I don't know, 15 foot in air. He's jumped out window. He's broke his out. So there were all sorts going on in that thing. So I'd smacked slightly with a, with a cabbage or lettuce. <laughs> Have we got this footage? Uh, I've got it. He's got, um, when that lad's broke his ankle on the same night. Just fucking madness but, everywhere. And what we did was someone lost a tooth. I, I can remember you, you did this <laughs> it as well. Been, it could have been my tooth, to be fair. It was. Uh, <laughs> So we had the Bowers Castle, it was, you could have about a 20 foot run up. Yeah, we were doing that. And the one person on the Bowers Castle, it was like a bit of a rugby game, yeah. and you had to touch the back of the Bowers Castle. So once someone's up Bowers Castle bouncing about, and people took it in turns to run, and it was fucking, we pissed as well. So we're just smashing each other. Like Take Takeshi's Castle or something. Yeah, like that. and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure someone, it was someone's tooth, their an ankle broke, cabbage to the face. How much and then, damage did cabbage cause? Um, it was still standing, and I think <laughs> yeah. he ate him first time, and then they thought they were going to be, and then Zach just started <laughs> so, giving him more. So the, the hard bit, the, the bottom, I just started drilling him with that instead. I like but, it. Yeah, there were, I've, had, I've had some mad, mad stuff happen, especially at my mum's house. But I hope she doesn't watch it. But um, <laughs> yeah, I've had some great, great parties and stuff back in the day. Mm. I think we are just getting a little bit older and trying to just. Yeah, like I, honestly, I've, obviously, with my two kids, all my days off, I've got my kids, and I'm, I'm trying to think of stuff to do because. My little one's nearly three now, my little boy. And he gets he's an handful, so it's like, what can I do to burn him out? So it's yeah. like parks, walks, soft plays. I've probably been to every soft play in West Yorkshire. Museums, because they're free, and it's just trying to burn him, burn his energy down. And are, you, are you getting him into any rugby, or are you taking him to any sports? Yeah, so he, watch, he watches me play rugby. He watches. He came to a few Lee Drynos games last year, and I've pretty much just got him to stop shouting Lee Drynos. He loves the <laughs> Lee Drynos chant. But now he's, you know, he knows Lee Leopards. He comes to all the games, um, and he wants to play rugby all the time. So, you know, I'll get I'll get two cushions out either side, and they'll get the rugby ball and they'll run at me. And to be fair to him, he just runs no fear. And I, I do give him it a little bit. So I'll pick him up, <laughs> give him it, and I like give him a bit of the shit on the floor. It's like daddy's turn, daddy's turn, and I go on my knees, and he bashes, yeah, over the top and of he him. bashes me. Um, <laughs> but my, my daughter's thirteen months, and I get told off now because I'm doing look like stuff like that with, with Abel and it's a bit rough. He's using Olive, my daughter, as a bit of a, a battering right. ram. So he'll just go and just twat around back at Ed. And she starts crying. It's like, I told you he shouldn't be doing that, mate. <laughs> well, he, I play rugby. He's going to he's gonna copy me. So we have a bit of arguments about that. But um, I'd love for him to get into sport, but I'd love for, if I could pick a sport for him, it'd be like golf, yeah. something like that. So, like nice weather, loads of money. And hopefully I could just, chill out and use his money. <laughs> I like it, I like it. So there's method in the badness, but um, yeah, I, he's, he's not as, as sport as I'd like him to be. He's just, um, he loves nature and, and running about and stuff like that. But um, yeah, it does it does odd tackling. Nice. So it's not too bad. Do you get to spend much time out in nature? Again, I, I wasn't one for, for nature and, and stuff like that, but I'm getting, to, my mum's got a caravan, so I've took kids carav caravanning, uh, been into a few lodges in the last, last couple of months and, I'm getting into that bit now where... You walk, just, you walk barefoot? No, I'm not into Get that. Get grounded, anyway. man. I know, well, I've, I've, <laughs> it may, do you know what? Well, I've watched a video and it's like, you know, your energy's, the earth's got an energy and it's called something, something like 0.565 and, you know, that comes, and I'm like, well, you know what? I might just walk out garden and then, and I'll step out of it and think you're weird. No, dude, but do it. You still do uh, bro, I, bro, I don't do it every night, but my, 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 I need to cut my grass, but. <laughs> I, bro, I, I've bought um, a grounding bed sheet have you? I've got a grounding pillowcase and you have to like plug it in and plug it into your plug socket and turn the switch mate, off. Took so it, we so travelled to Dublin and took it with us. Yeah, yeah. mate, I, I, I've seen it. Great we, night's We're on about, we've got, a, I think we've got TikTok of the same yeah, we will FYP have. stuff, uh, conspiracy theories and stuff like that. And I'm, I, it gets me, I'm like, you know what, there's something different here and I, I probably will try it, mate. So we'll Do see. Yeah. Did you see, what's the gentleman's called who invited you to the cold? What's his business called again? Oh, Wim Hof. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's a, it's a place in um, where is it now? Is it something Manor? Something Manor, yeah. We'll um, find it. It's over yeah. like Doncaster. But you say there, yeah, three Doncaster degrees. Way. How have you found the cold for your mindset? It's absolutely brilliant. Did you yeah. find it hard to start with? I, I that's right. So I, we've been doing ice baths for rugby for twelve years, and I fucking refused to win them. I said because it's meant to be back back in the day. It was for inflammation recover quicker, blah, 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 blah. So when I'm 21, 22, I'm like, I'd rather get a hot bath. Like yeah. for me, that's, I feel better after a warm yeah. bath. Yeah. Technically, it brings out your bruise and stuff, so it's not not ideal, but I just refuse to get an ice bath. And then when all this movement started coming in and it's good for your mental health, and I'm like, well, oh, fucking hell, I need that more, <laughs> more than a lot, <laughs> more than a lot of people. So 
I started doing it. I'm, I'm really enjoying it. And then when I went to that one, the three degrees, which is the coldest one I've ever been in, it is like a drug. They say, you know, yeah. it's like a... Same release as cocaine. Dope, yeah, 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 cocaine, the dopamine levels, you go through the roof. And I can remember I did it. And sometimes I drink a couple of cups of coffee or I have a Red Bull just, just to get me going through the day. I came out of there and I was like, fucking hell, I'm buzzed. And I just wanted to do a lot of things. So with me, I'm I'm a bit like, I'm going to do that, but I might do it later. And it takes me two weeks. Mm. I come away from there, I'm like, I'm going to do loads of stuff now. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I try and get there once a week, but um, I really want something built in, in my back garden because I just think it's going to be something that yeah. I'd like to use every day. Yeah, and the, just the benefits for it, just not just uh, physically, but I think mentally. I feel for me, it's the resistance. I never want to do it. Yeah. But once you've done that, it's like, right. Well, I, and again, I'll go on TikTok, but he said, the reason why it's so good is you wake up in the morning. I think he said it works about half past five, five o'clock. And it's like, the last thing I want to do is get in that fucking cold, cold plunge, cold bath. And he said, so if that's going to be one of the hardest parts of my morning and I can do it, then everything else Easy. takes care of itself. So it's Makes like, sense. that's the hardest bit for me. So he says, I do that. And I'm like, well, everything's not going to be as difficult. So... I'm like, yeah, that sounds a bit like... Is that your idea to get a decent kit out or just going to get like what I've got a little... Yeah, I'll probably start off with a little yeah. loomy bath or, yeah. or whatever it is. Uh, even a wheelie bin. They, they keep work. old school. Yeah, uh, keep it council. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, yeah, I think you can get them for a few grand. I haven't got a few grand spare at the minute, but I'd like to to get a, a proper proper ice bath and get it done properly because, like I say, I think it'll be something that... I should, I should be using every day. I want to get, I want to kit mine out a little bit better. And I want to get an infrared sauna as well. I'm a big fan of them. Infrared, he's got yeah. one there as well. And yeah, he sort yeah. of go between both. Yeah. So he's got a sauna at the minute. And then he's, I think it's just been built next door, the infrared bit. And that, the benefits of that is, is, is mad. So mm. I think that's where it's going now. Instead of like just your gyms, it should be like a health spa with, with stuff like that. Touchy subject at the moment, that. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah. fuck Fort Park Spa. <laughs> That he said that I, I still love Fort Park. <laughs> Don't cancel my membership. We've full got, of fucking grannies, it, isn't that? It, mate? Yeah, it is full of grannies, but I like that. He convinced <laughs> me. He convinced me to sign up. He's like, we need to get. Uh, it's got no, a I didn't. Let, it was, it was let idea. Me, let me give some then. context. It says, we'll go have a look, and you've then, like you do, you've gone with your missus. You've talked this gym up like it were fucking the it gym. Was. You said it, it like the gym good. in Dublin. Nothing like that. It's similar. Not as I said, similar, not as good. It's not what I thought. Can you it get was. a free pass? I might have. You only got, trained in it once. He's got twelve passes, mate. He'll I've get got you twenty, bro. Yeah. Anytime you want, you can come with me, mate. Oh, I'll have a go. Yeah, no have problem. But this is the thing: they told us when we signed up on a Sunday, they let kids into the pool. I won't listen to. So it. Josh turns up, probably a bit rough or something. I don't know. He's been sleeping all day and turns up and goes, "Fuck's going on here?" <laughs> I'm like, "Oh, what?" And he's like, "There's no fucking place to swim." And I'm like, "Oh, yeah, there's quite a few kids in here." That so we we we're, we're chilling. Me and him were chilling, and then. Um, his missus comes in I'm like where's Josh and she's like oh I don't know he, he might have forgot his swim shot so I walked out and he's just sat there with a cup of coffee and reception I'm like, what are you doing he's like fucking joke like, I ain't going in there I'm like, it's a bad mate. mentality me as, as I've got older I don't know that I've got more like grumpy grumpy yeah, or you're cynical very very grumpy if, <laughs> if I don't if it's not for me, I just cut it straight away. Yeah. See, I'm easy me. Like I walked in, seen it full of kids. I was like, I bothered. I just fucking plonked myself in the middle of the pool and just swam in between the door, throwing balls over his head and that one. And like oh, I won't even. God, they, they kept, yeah, they kept apologising. I was like, fine, not not asked whatsoever. Just nothing phasing. And he's like, I ain't jumping in there. The fucking scumbags. I'm cancelling my membership. And then he no, messaged no, me. I did straight away. Just, he messaged so, me as, as soon as like, I made a decision, mate. Yeah. Bang, that's it. No. So I'm, I was we were on about it earlier. Depending on what mood I'm in that day, I'd react differently. So I'd, if I'm in a really good mood and something's really going well. I'd jump in head first and fucking head ball with kids. On a flip side, I could be... Just walk off straight away. Fuck that, I'm not going with them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but that's, that's, a, that's a you problem though, isn't yeah. it? That's a you problem. Like, yeah, yeah, it's not a general... Yeah, yeah. it's not... I, won't, I probably won't... For, and, for but, 170 nicker a month, I want to be able to swim. Fuck is it, that a fair assessment? Just don't come on a Sunday night. Probably, flat is, price. Is, that's a fair assessment. If it's just it, Sundays, then I can... Then just just Sundays. Sundays. There's a few oh. times I've been in where grannies are hogging lanes and yeah. that, and like fucking just, <laughs> you just gotta have little a little fucking. When you were saying, you even said, why are they even swimming in here? Because they're just going yeah, about fucking 0. 0.7 no, mile an one, hour. Just... One woman were like doing the breaststroke with her arms, but walking along the floor, just doing lengths like that. And I'm like, yeah. what is she doing there? I should have swam Tom Bomber. Yeah. <laughs> or just swam underneath. Out of that. nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever watch, this is going down a completely different on. rabbit hole now. Were you a wrestling fan growing up? You used to watch it? Yeah, yeah. What That's sort it. of era were you watching? Like Undertaker, Mankind, Rock, Undertaker, all that? Undertaker, Mankind, Rock. Um, so it was Friday Night, Friday Raw. Night Raw. So yeah, I, I loved it. Stone Cold Steve Austin. Remember um, Hardy Boys? Hardy Boys, loved it. Um, he's gone a bit off rails, hasn't he, Jeff? 
I think they do. I think there's that. They put themselves through that every single week. I know it's not real fighting, yeah. but the putting the body through that much trauma, I think they take that much pain medication and drugs and just yeah. to keep going that. It, it, I listened to not, a podcast with Ric Flair. Yeah, I yeah, yeah, knelt by his podcast. He's a, mad, he's a mad man. I watched and he it said as well. he was just fucking pissed every day. He drinks every day. Yeah. I think he still does now, something like that. And it was like, oh yeah, I'd wake up in the morning, have a drink. And he's a function. I don't think, he, he said he's not an alcoholic, but probably is. Well, he owns a bar and he sits behind the booth like uh, karaoke. He owns a karaoke bar and he just sits there in his own bar every Does night it? and just gets people up singing. But I mean, you can call it alcoholism, but if he's just fucking having a steady drink every day, what's yeah. up with that? It's yeah, just like us having about... a steady smoke every day. I watched yeah. an old video of when Undertaker and Mankind fought in the cage yeah. and he flung him off top. I was like, fucking yeah. what the put yeah. Hell of a cell. Yeah. Because I'm quite I, I impressed by what he's doing. I'm quite <laughs> impressed what he's doing. Uh, Logan, Logan Paul. Paul. Very impressed by what yeah. he's achieving but with that. We just said then about rugby not being as physical and not being like it was 10 years ago. Do you feel like wrestling's gone the same? It's not as savage as it used to be, like diving off at cages yeah, and stuff. Yeah, and, and the characters were more brutal and, and they had a really good storyline behind them, didn't mm, they? Yeah. Whereas, whereas now it's a bit more kiddified, yeah. um, like a bit more for the younger generation where even the older, older lot used to watch it back yeah. in the day, didn't they? Yeah. I know they still do now, but... You know, the root of mankind and who else? They were just, just big characters, um, weren't they? They're like the yeah, big Gold show, Dust, Steve shows Austin, and Gold Dust, and the, yeah, the, yeah. the fucking scary humans, weren't they? Whereas yeah. now it's a bit like, it's more more acting. So mm. that's why I think Logan Paul's doing amazing. Um, and I, I saw some clips of him fighting uh, just at the weekend and some of the moves he does is fucking Very freaky. athletic, isn't he? He's, he's done like a, come off ropes and he's like, pulled his leg up, passed his ear and then just like, slammed it down. Fan, following him like that, like, that's a bit mad, that. So it has to be pretty good. Did you see the one where they both jumped from corner to corner and closed like yeah. each other in the middle? Yeah, and then it, like, one of them landed and fell on his leg, and I'm like, ooh. So it's, in that aspect, I think it's a lot more like athletic y, yeah. but more for, for more acting. Yeah. Whereas it was more, not as athletic, but brutal. Mm -hmm. Like there were fucking blood, there were, yeah. there were a lot of stuff going on. Do you on, think these they? new wrestlers now are on like TRT and VP157 they're all, they're all and all that? Yeah. yeah. Because Thousands. Logan Paul did that show and then just. Walked out at venue, got on his private jet, flew to Dallas or wherever it was, yeah, Jake Paul were fighting and yeah. just did another night, like another day in office. Like, but if that were me, mate, I'd have probably spent a couple of nights in hospital from And you probably, yeah, yeah but so imagine that. being paid a million quid, you're probably on cloud nine, straight into your private jet. You'll, even if you fucking ruptured your fucking Achilles, you'd be fucking, ah, uh, fuck it. Yeah. They're probably on cloud nine then. Someone, I bet at their level, because I don't care what anyone says about them, it's impressive what they've achieved, them brothers, yeah. that, that family. Oh, it's mad. Must even, be on cloud nine. Even Jake Paul, like, Fuck it, he can, he can, he can, he can have a scrap, can't yeah. he? Can, well, he can, have, he can have a box. Yeah. And just like the runs and stuff he does, he puts himself through a world of pain mm -hmm. to get to that point. And I just think, fucking hats off to you. So yeah. I, I think it's amazing. Did me, you watch any of his fight? I didn't watch the Nate Diaz one, no. I've seen obviously clips after it, but I just love the Nate Diaz bit where he's just fucking in choke cold yeah. after and he's like, woo. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's still just, a boy. I think he will represent, yeah. I think he were trying to show there that if it's for a real fight, yeah, you're fucking yeah, He got yeah, a single leg in first one, he just like, give him a little, <laughs> yeah, you're dead. could have took you down there, Mush. And then he's just like, yeah, I could have choked you out there, Mush. Yeah. yeah. I feel, a street fight, he'd fucking oh, yeah, do nah, some like, yeah. Oh, you're a big advocate yeah. of Prime then, because we said we had an energy drink, we've got the drink well, here. I'm sure you had a, uh, a Prime last time I came. Can't afford it, can't afford it, mate. Yeah, it's all gone downhill, mate. Sorry about that. Well, two pound emotions, I got that for £2.50 one but uh, I'll, I actually love it I'm a I you love... try the ice blast one it's a bit of a weird taste oh, yeah. ice pop one sorry become an ambassador bro yeah get oh, it shout, up there. Shout get out it KSI. up there. fucking sponsor the man Meta Moon <laughs> <laughs> um, no I, I, to be fair I, I really like the taste and I'm a I'm, I'm a quite a sweet sweet person and uh, I, I drink pop normally all the time but if I drink them it takes that the need for yeah. for a can of coke or yeah. a Fanta or something like that so yeah I don't mind it it's quite kind of healthy as well I think I ain't tried that moon one of you. You can have a do taste you, if you want. You, uh, go on then. Meta that, moon. Yeah. Meta moon, yeah. Do you think we've landed on the moon before? Oh, here we go. <sighs> I'm getting them binoculars anyway, mate, for this I'm fucking, not sure. these chemtrails. I think we might have done. It tastes what a bit grapey. What do you think? My only like view it. with that, what we said, nice. we, we said up at the at Blondies, that if we've been before, why have Can we you? not been back with the development we've got now? Why is Elon Musk yeah. not there? Why is... Why is he adamant of going to Mars and this, that, and the other? I, I just don't get it on me. Yeah, like what we're on about. It, we've got that much. Unless it costs science, that much to get there. I don't that know. That much science behind us. Surely that would make more of a progression. You'd have thought, wouldn't you? Um, he thinks there's an alien base there. What, an on the moon? I thought you said that to me. No, not on the moon. There's an alien base on, on Earth. 
Oh, fuck's sake. You think it's an alien base on Earth? Antarctica, yeah, you think? come on, past Antarctic War, Antarctic, bro. You, well, th- there you go. It's not really been explored, Why don't the first no. vlog, because we've got a fucking South African millionaire as a backer, <laughs> yeah. so listen, we've got an idea that we want to go to Antarctica with his leopard stuff on and find out if it's true or not. I don't want to break it to you, but what? if you go over leopard print on one, a fucking polar bear is going to smash you to bits. <laughs> no, we'll, two, we'll, we'll think about some weapons. You're just going to get, if you try flying over there, mate, you're getting shot down either by a UFO or a fucking military man. Yeah. Fuck's sake. You're not making out. Well, alive, I find I'm it afraid. weird. So like I see um, like Chinese fighter jets just whizzing past people in, over Britain or, and it's like, they're just showing the, like, hi. It's like, yeah. well, what the fucking are you doing? And, <laughs> and Russian pilots are doing the same and they find a submarine just off the coast of fucking Ireland or something. It's like, Do you remember five years ago when the jet was scrambled and all that sonic boom? Yeah, no. yeah right, right over here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And they were like smashing windows yeah. and, and that, that must be scrambling for some reason for it to yeah. be. No one really figured out what it was for. And there was no explanation for it. Were they no. like, oh yeah, there were a, a sonic boom went through town, that's it, end off. Mm. Could have been a, a, UA, a UAP that. UAP. Well, how come we don't say UFO anymore? I think they've just changed name. It's like unidentified something phenomenon. All right. I can't, I can't explain well, it. Well, that, that in itself is just like, well, we're not explaining what it is. It's just a one in a blue moon. I, I do want to go deep, but I'll, I've just edited Emily's podcast and I know we had these similar conversations on here. And I I'll tell you what, I will, I, I tell you what I, I will ask. We, we're going to be hosting at Northern Social a poker night. Yeah. And we're going to, I want, I want you to be there. <laughs> I, mean, I, want, I want us to have quite serious attire. Yeah, no, I, I want, I'll I want get, us to come, for it, I want yeah. us to come full blown, like, yeah, you know, prepared Yeah, wear my Oakley big glasses. Yes. So you can't see. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure that might not work, so you see reflection in my cards. Oh, yeah. Mm. Thinking man. Yeah. So, yeah. I'll Can you play poker? Hat. Yeah, I'm all right. I won't say I'm, I'm brilliant. Invite your leopard friend and we'll, uh, hey, tell him we'll get the tables leopard print if he comes and invests Derek a bit. Derek might like that. I'll do what I will. Nice. But that'd be brilliant, mate. Yeah, I'd love to. I like How close are we to getting this organised? Brad's calling me today, so if he can call. He says that every day. He does. It's not me. <laughs> he's calling me today. That he's in, uh, he's in Marbella or something at the moment. Mm. But apparently Brad's got eight tables, so we can set a full thing up in here. Yeah, and I'll um, be have a little tournament. Yeah, it'll be good. Have you seen? You'll have watched Hangover. Yeah. What's the, the <laughs> What's the slightly autistic kid called in it? Oh, the, the, Alan. 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 Yeah. I want, I want Carl Jeffries to come dress as Alan. <laughs> <laughs> I think he would do. Yeah, mate. He'd be happy to do that. I think that. he'd do yeah. that. Yeah. Just strap a little baby as well. Yeah. From, <laughs> Let's give a shout out to Carl. You came to the opening night. He's doing a fantastic job next door, isn't he? Oh, mate, I'm mad, yeah. Like I said to him, it's not my kind of scene, that, the, the music and stuff, but I actually enjoyed it. Um, i just seen the different people and everyone was just smiling. Everyone enjoyed it. And then I spoke to him um, the week after. It was taken back how, how well it went. Um, I think, you know, took a bit of, took some good money behind the bar. Um, the band really enjoyed it. I think the band were on the verge of splitting up. Of splitting up. Mm-hmm. And now uh, they got together. I think they've got a, I think they're playing at Featherstone Rovers game maybe next week or in a few weeks. So, you know, off the back of that, that's happening for them. He gets so invested, Carl, doesn't he? Yeah. Like, and when it, he's, it, he's got an idea, he needs to make it he happen. He wants people to, he wants it to work and he wants people to enjoy it and, and be successful. And I think, especially around here, it's, it's, it's rare to see someone wanting the best for other people as well. Yeah. You know, he's not he's not that selfish. So he's, he's like, any ideas, he's like, so I've tossed up some weird ideas. I can't right. remember off the top of my head what. Well, I was just like... Uh... <laughs> what, ladyboys and that one? Yeah, probably. <laughs> um, I don't know, if you've just got 100 rugby lads in there, called it, I don't know what it is. The, the, buy, the, the spent money behind bar, he's in. Just, he's not bothered about people using the venue. He just wants the, you know, people to, to, to buy his beer, but... There's loads of stuff that goes on and he's, he's really invested, like, yeah, yeah, I'll take that. And We toyed with the idea of maybe putting a, a boxing match on it, yeah. but the only obstacle seemed to be where the boys would get warmed up. Right. So you I don't know, know if I don't know or... his homeless man's got to vacate for a couple of days or Yeah, there's a homeless man that's living here, yeah. yeah. That he's just took... That's Carl Oliver, that, isn't it? Yeah, he just, just took him in. Uh, lives up, does he live upstairs or live in there? For I, think he's part, I, think, I think he's pointing upstairs. Is now. he in penthouse yeah, now? Yeah, <laughs> I think, <laughs> a penthouse I, I think, I think he just walks down and grabs himself a beer and yeah, stuff respect. whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's kind of kind of bloke we're talking about there. It's just lovely. <laughs> Have you spoke to this homeless one before? Would it be good no, on it, Mate, he's actually a sound as fuck guy. He plays good music out of his cabin. Let's get him on. I think he might have... I think that'd be... Hey, he'd have a good story, match. I think that'd, that'd be, be a good, good shout. Story. Yeah, like, how did you end up here? Yeah. In Carl's loft? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I bet how did Carl, you go from homeless to the fucking I always try, <laughs> I, I bet when Carl's took this on, I'll just try and, like, timeline it. He's realised as an homeless man there, 99% of the population be like, 
you know, Shoe. It, it, it's a shame, mate, but I've yeah. got a business now. You're going to have to, yeah. you know, Carl's just like, no problem, mate. I'll build you a penthouse. At yeah. the top. That's probably what Carl's, is yeah. that nice of a guy? Yeah, and I think he, well, that night when uh, the band was here, it was, it was saying like, he's, he's come down, he's, he's offered a, a, a pint. I just walked back upstairs. I'm like, Oh, so he's in the penthouse officially? Yeah, yeah. Fucking hell. He'll have Carl bringing him up to him soon. <laughs> Probably. Carlos. Head of security. <laughs> yeah. That's how it all starts, mate. They start then just expecting them. I reckon like... he might get a job behind bar. He could be like the cleaner or he might get him a job. I yeah. think he might, Carl must have him doing something. There's no way he's doing it for I, I, for I think to be fair, he'll probably just keep an eye on building. Be, Carl said he recognises every noise. Oh, yeah. security. Yeah. Head of security. Yeah, yeah. It makes me laugh. I, I like how Carl, like, when he speaks to us, and he's like, no, I'm just doing it. He said to us, I, I did this initially to get Karakana back together and I want them to do this and I want to do that. And then he comes up podcast, he's like, yeah, I'm just glad that he's done it. Then we got him a bit pissed up on the event and we're like, Carl, how's your night going? He's like, yeah, it's been really good. Everybody's loving it. We're making shit loads of money. <laughs> <laughs> you were like doing like that. You know, just yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> True colours come out. Yeah, well, to grow any business, let's be real, you, it's got to be profitable. Well, so think, to make it venue you want, it's got to make money. Yeah, and I think he would, it, it was not terrified, but he was scared of, maybe not selling 500 tickets and then maybe say 200 come because I think the band got paid on, on, on the ticket sales. So I think they were like, if we sell 200, you get 200 quids worth or 500. So yeah. he gave them the, the money that they deserved. And then I think he was a bit nervous about people coming or was it was it out there for enough for people to, yeah. to come? And ever since then, I've, I've been here a couple of times just playing pool and darts and stuff and people come in and there's people I've never seen before. So... I think he, he's just sat there and he's just really happy that, it, you know, word of mouth's got out and I think he got some good footage of, of the bands and stuff like that. So I think he can use that as, you know, information for other bands to come and play. Yeah. And hopefully the venue looks up. nice with Northern Social look back It looks later. really it looks good, yeah. Me. And I think it's professional, it looks really professionally done. And yeah, I think it will obviously try by error, but I think more things went right than wrong. So he's, yeah. he's Before happy. we let you go, give me a prediction for this weekend. Um, I'm, I'm always confident anyway, mate, but... I just feel like we've got too many things for us to not fail. People writing us off the start of the year, the owner, the players that we've got, you know, the older end that, like I say, it could be his last one. Um, and the, just the fact that we've got all his families going down and that's been sorted out last week. And yeah, like, like I said, I think personally, if we play our best game and look how I play theirs, we win. Um, I firmly believe that, so... In that case, it's just up that down to us. So I think if we lose, it's because we'll we went up to the races. So, but I think every, speaking to everyone, everyone's that excited and really, really willing to dig their heels in that um, we should hopefully pull it, play out the bag, mate. So I know you said you, it's not an individual sport and you want the team playing eight out of ten, nine out of ten. If Ellis is going to put some of his OnlyFans money online for Lance Todd, isn't he's making big money at the minute? Yeah. Um, <laughs> where, where, where are we where are we putting this money? Zach Ardaker, Lance Todd Trophy winner. Um, Come on, where's the money going? You just tell us how much. Okay, I, I can't. I don't know if I'm allowed to say because we, we cast us betting. Um, I, I'll, I'll probably give you a prediction of who who might play well. So I'll say from Ulkar's point of view, you Kenny, know, you're going to say Kenny Dowell. I think he'll play well, but I don't think he'd, he'd be up All for right. that kind of um, Lance Todd. I think Michael Lewis is an exciting talent. I think if if Ulkar went on to win, he could be there or thereabouts. Um, the young kid they've got is so much Schneider, young kid in the halves. He's I think he did the drop goal to to beat Wigan, mm. so they're probably top two um, for for KR. Ours, I'd say John Asiata, the captain. Uh, Lock on Lamb, he's been he's been absolutely brilliant. Um, Kai O'Donnell is a back row, and uh, you got a back your end, surely. Come on, well, why not? I'd yeah. put myself in the mix. So uh, yeah, like I say, I think if like if we if if I perform an eight out of ten performance it might not get the trophy but if we, if we all do it collectively i think so we'll put we'll put 10 grand zach Ardaker, lance todd 10 grand <laughs> zach Ardaker, first try scorer and that's all she wrote hey eh? i'll send you an invoice if you don't yeah. do it yeah. <laughs> that's only two weeks work for you that. i saw right. one picture, one picture. I, um, I saw him just a bit, uh, this drake curse every oh, time yeah. drake puts a bet on they put 250 grand on, on eight Diaz to yes, win yeah, again and every time there's a curse Conspiracy that or what? 
Well, it is, but then it's shit better. He's always winning on roulette. Yeah, Have you seen those. But I think he's got a deal with Steak. Me, I don't think I that's think get, a real. I bet. think they get paid for all. I think Steak know exactly who's gonna. Not exactly, but I know that Jake, they know that Jake Paul's gonna beat Nate Diaz. So they go, Drake, pretend that you've put hundred k on, and let's get oh, this conspiracy right. and let's fucking build all the hype. But then everyone else wants to bet. Then oh, I'm backing Drake. On, oh, and I'm doing opposite of Drake's decision. Fuck now. There's someone ah, behind. Right, yeah, no, it makes sense. But Just, I won't be following his bets. Well, always number eleven comes in or number twelve. So I've not, I've not followed it, but I'm thinking some poor bugger out there will be. Doing exactly the same fucking because he's like puts about I don't know two million on eleven then backs all around corners. I'm thinking some poor bastards putting the savings on that. I do want to get that going thinking. here. I want to get the bit of gambling stuff here. Yeah, I do. And if Brad can get that, I think we could have a good laugh with that, mate. Yeah, hundred <clears throat> percent. Happy with that, boys. You got any shout outs to do? Zach? Yeah, get some shout outs in. Any of the boys? You know what? Funny enough, he texted me just before. I came. Why don't you ask your ex girlfriend? If it's Brad Sutcliffe, <laughs> <laughs> she'll say no, just watch your head. Get him in, in the co- big bed. Comments, no, Get exactly. in the big bed. <laughs> right, so I'd say Brad Sutcliffe has won, but he's, he's paying the backside half at time. But he's a lovely kid. He's expecting his child as well very soon. And one of the lads I've got to got to put on is Dave Robinson. Yeah, he's the man. He uh, he's newly single. He's is he? It? Yeah, he's. Is often found in coffee shops around West Yorkshire. So I see him in Blunders a fair bit. Yeah, so he's out and about. Is he approachable? Um, very approachable. He's, <laughs> uh, he's looking. He's looking well. He's growing his hair. Is he? So he's not going to cut it for a year. So he's got the slip back going on. Fuck me! This he's, is like a midlife crisis going on then now. I think it, it's, it's really it's near there. Yeah, but, <laughs> but I, won't, I don't want to say that too much because it might put people off. But is uh, what do we approach? Like, do we approach him in person or slide into DMs? Bit of both, I think. Yeah, but as, as long um, as it's with care. With care, yeah, he's, he's a lovable, lovable kid. And um, yeah, he asked me to say it and he said, oh no, I'm not joking, I'm not joking. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be like, he'd be like seeing, so that's for you, Dave. Good <laughs> on, man. Well, appreciate the time again, mate. Pleasure, You're a fucking mate. legend. Cheers, Thank you for having me, boys. Good luck, mate, weekend. Cheers.